Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's session. Hopefully, Marianne and me can get me going today on this chilly Thursday here. <laughs> Our cover media composer following the blur with Mary Ann. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I will be monitoring the social feeds as much as possible. So let's quickly go through our housekeeping items. Well, the webinar is being recorded and your audio is muted. If you're following us on Zoom, you can ask questions in that questions field. We love to get great questions in and Mary Ann's always so happy to answer them. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. It looks like we've got people in from Colombia and the UK. Welcome everyone. We're so glad to have you on this session. We have with us Mary Ann Post, one of our avid master instructors, and she's amazing covering so many sessions for everyone. So I'm, we are definitely hoping you're enjoying these sessions. Marianne, today you're talking about following the blur. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to you so you can get started. All right, hi everybody. I hope everybody is doing well. And as mentioned, I am gonna be covering how to conceal subjects with blur effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Here. There we go. So hopefully you guys can all see Media Composer. I am running Media Composer 2020.10 on Catalina. We're gonna be using blur effects that have been around for a while. So if you're on an earlier version, no worries. If you haven't word, worked with blur tracking, uh, no worries there. I'm gonna start with a nuts and bolts act activity and then we'll move on to a couple of examples that troubleshoot and give you some strategies if you're looking more for that. So hopefully I've got all of you guys covered. I have three examples for you and I'm gonna pop into full screen mode. Um, so I'm gonna hit shift command F, shift control F on Windows, hopefully here, there we go. Um, so first example is gonna be super basic. We have very clear footage and we've got a parkour artist who just flipped over two guys who are napping and we didn't get the release to use the guys in the video. So we're gonna blur them out. So that's gonna be the first example, super straightforward, nuts and bolts. Second example, classic license plate. Uh, so rectangle shape. So if you're covering up logos, that kind of thing, anything in the rectangle realm. Uh, not a straightforward position change. We've got a little bit of perspective change. So we'll talk about how to strategize that. And then the last example, this lady riding a bike, and I just hit pause here, and I'm gonna hold on my K and J key simultaneously to go backwards, because we got a tree. So what do you do when you need to track and there's an obstruction? So there's the troubleshooting example. So that one's a little bit more complex. Uh, so let's start off with nuts and bolts here. Uh, so I'm on my first shots in the left. And I'm gonna go into my effects workspace here on the right of the interface and select my shots. And what effect are we gonna use? Uh, image category. So I'm in the effect palette here, image category on the left. And there's really three options and one I like in particular. Classic blur effect, which is the title of this class. So that's what we're gonna start with. But you might like the mosaic look or your client might like the mosaic look better. And then of course we have the paint effect, which is my favorite and you'll see why as we go along. To start, I'm gonna do the title of the class, Blur Effect. I have my clip selected. You can see it in white here at the bottom of my timeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click this to apply it. If your uh, segment isn't selected, you can drag and drop, of course, as well. All right, so set up. I have two options for setting up my effect because there's two phases. One is the shape, so creating the blur on their faces. Two is the tracking, so two separate things. Technically, you can go either way. You can start with your shape and then do the tracking or you can track and do the shape. I'm gonna do both as we go through the session so you can see both. For this one, I'm gonna start off with tracking. So in my effects editor, on the lower right here, there's a tracking tool. Okay, so I'm gonna click that and that's gonna throw me into tracking. So the only change is a window pop up and then on my preview monitor, we have a yellow box and that's what we're gonna use to set up our tracker. You always get one default tracker and then you can add trackers as you need. You wanna try to keep it as simple as possible. So 
in this case, we're going to be tracking two subjects across the position change. So if I scrub through, you'll see that we're not zooming in, we're not rotating the camera. It's a simple position change. So this is an ideal scenario for tracking. Okay, so great for a nuts and bolts example. So I'm going to start off by tracking the guy on the left. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. I will tell you if my footage is clear like this, I'm pretty lazy and usually just grab my tracker, drag it over my subject and go. All right, but let's talk a little bit about strategy in case your footage isn't quite as clear as this. So I'm gonna zoom in and I can quickly zoom into this region where the yellow box is by holding down my command key, control on windows. And hopefully you can see this, but my cursor changed to a magnifying glass. So when I click, it zooms into that region. Okay, so I clicked once and there we go. So what you're looking for for good tracking so it doesn't travel off your subject is a nice geometrical shape and contrast, which I have both here. We've got his face with nice contrast and it's a geometrical shape, okay? So like I said, I'd probably be done setting up my tracker. But just to give you a little bit of more information, we've got this yellow box on the inside. This is the region of interest. And you want to set the size of this to roughly about the shape and size of your subject that you're following. Uh, you don't want to go too big or too small because Media Composer might get lost and then your trackers will travel off, which you'll see in a future example. Then we have a buffer region called the search area. And you can just uh, click these and drag. So I'm just creating dragging the, uh, the area on the right there, the corner, to enlarge that or make it smaller. You uh, get, This is like if you have a sudden camera move and at the next frame, Media Composer might lose track of your subject. Here's a little widened search, okay? Now you don't wanna go too wide because again, Media Composer might get confused and start tracking something else, all right? So this setup is actually really good, pretty simple. And so I'm gonna zoom back out here. Um, Command Option K, Control Option K on Windows. You can also use your magnifying glasses in the preview window if you're not at the level of using keyboard shortcuts yet. Okay, so I need a second tracker. So in my tracking window, I have set up tracking section and I'm gonna click add tracker. So create new tracker, click that button and now I get a new tracker. Now, because I have two, I might wanna rename these. Like I remember right now, but then if I have to revisit this in a month, I may not remember what goes with what. So I'm just gonna click on tracking point A and type left, cause that goes with the left, the guy on the left. And then I'm gonna click tracking point B and call this right. Okay. And there we go. Now I'm gonna be super lazy with tracking point B just to show you that you can, with very clear footage, and a defined contrast and geometrical shape, set this up fast. I just move this over the guy, I'm gonna call that good and see what happens. Um, Media Composer might prove me wrong, but we'll see. So I've got my two trackers set up, one more setup item. These are, I can see my trackers clearly. If you can't, you can always change your colors by clicking the color swatch and in the tracker window, and then you get a couple colors. So like I might pick, magenta or something like that. I usually try to pick a contrasty color that stands out and magenta oftentimes does the trick. Okay, so let's track this. We've got our two trackers set up and then at the very top of the tracking window is a start tracking button. You click that and watch the progress. Okay, so I'm just kind of watching those points and they look like they're doing a good job. Okay, uh, especially the one on the right that I was super lazy about setting up. So clear footage, allows for some laziness. Now, if I'm not sure that it followed well, I'm pretty confident it did. But if you're not, in your tracking window, there's an option called point range. If you click that pop-up menu and change it to current, you can actually step through or scrub through your preview monitor and watch the points to see where they are at any moment in time. And this is looking good. We lucked out that our parkour artist didn't come in front of his face at all. So we didn't have any obstructions or anything like that. Okay, so looking good. Now, um, I can't show it finally yet because I haven't set it up. So that's one of the drawbacks from setting up tracking first. So in second phase, setting up my shape. So I'm gonna close out in the upper right corner 
my tracking tool upper or upper left <laughs> upper right on windows um i'm not good with direction obviously and then i'm going to set up my shapes so i'm going to command control on windows click to draw this shape the blur tool and mosaic they are the exact same setup just different looks has two drawing shapes you have a rectangle and an oval okay so i'm just uh, going to click my oval here and then i'm going to click and drag in my screen and there we go we have a blur over his face now i can fine tune this without looking at the blur by going into my effects editor and turning off in the lower left corner the outline path to fine tune this uh, once the shape is drawn you can grab the corners and resize it if you need to change the shape there's no poly tool in this effect but you can double click your shape and then you get your poly options so if you need to change those for anybody who's been using paint effect you have to work around it or use the paint effect okay so that's looking good uh, now my blur look uh, what I like to do is use some feathering so I'm going to turn on feathering now notice as I'm turning on feathering that his I'm starting to see part of his face and that's because of a parameter called bias now I'm not seeing my full interface here because I'm on a laptop single monitor with a zoomed in so that you guys can see better so i don't have as much real estate space so i'm going to go ahead and create some and now you can see these parameters revealing themselves bias if i drag to the right is actually going to cause the blur region to shrink because it's shrinking the feathering inside the shape if i go to the left i get the opposite so that's more of what i want so you can usually i just kind of tweak this without having to constantly readjust my shape okay so we've got that so we've got some feathering and then with the blur i can adjust my blur amount so how blurry do you want it to be do you want to at least see that it's kind of a face all right so there we go so that's all set up my second one i'm going to set up a little bit faster here so i'm going to command option to get my hand tool uh control alt on windows scrub over here grab my oval and let's just draw this guy real fast like that and because i've already drawn a shape he inherits the same Kind of parameters and then you can tweak it all right so let's uh zoom back out here and let's see what the results are i'm gonna hit play um the blur looked great on the first frame but uh notice my faces are not blurred that's because the shape and the tracking are completely separate so i need to tie the two together Okay, so I've set up tracking, I've set up my shapes. Final step is to tie them together. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to click my first shape and I will zoom back in so you can see. So that tiny shape on the left, and I'm going to go to the tracking parameter in my effects editor and select left. Okay, or it would have been point A if I hadn't renamed these. So that's why renaming can be nice. And then I'm going to go to my second one on the right here. Notice it says no tracker. And then I'm going to choose right. So the benefit of this is then I don't need multiple effects and that kind of thing. So if there's like four people, I could have four different trackers and just use one at a time per shape. Super, super, super flexible. Now let's take a look at this. I'm going to go into full screen mode, see if I'm confident enough that I did a good job here. Um, this could use a little tweaking, but um it's a rough play and it totally tracked it no problem so super simple stuff like this really easy to do easy setup and that kind of thing okay it was a basic position change one tracker per object all right okay so then i'm gonna just pop back in here for one more point uh, so if it's all good, but then the client or yourself says, oh, you know what, a mosaic work look might work better. Uh, there's no modes in this. So you can't just automatically switch to mosaic. You can apply, you can copy the effect and try to grab some features from it and apply to mosaic. But I'll tell you that if you're going to use the blur or the mosaic, you're going to probably want to rebuild it in the mosaic effect or use the paint effect, which is what we're going to use in the second example. 
So my second example here is a license plate that we're going to cover. Okay. And it's not just a position change. The car is getting farther away from the camera and there's a slight rotation. And the way you can always check perspective is click on the first frame and then click at the last frame. And if there's a big scale and a little bit of rotation, you know, you're going to need two trackers. Um, I'm working with a rectangle. So you might think four trackers corner pin it. Uh, something like this that's small and not a, taking up a big space, two trackers should do it. And as you use this more, you'll start instinctively being able to decide that very quickly. So uh, this time I'm going to add the paint effect so that you can see that there's modes. Okay. When I go into the paint effect, by default, it really looks pretty similar. There's my rectangle tool and my oval tool, so I could still use those. But now I get the poly tool, so if you have to create custom shapes, you can do that. Uh, and then you also have the curve tool, which I generally don't recommend, which is topic for another day and past sessions. Okay, so I'm on my first frame. This time I'm going to make my shape first and then track, because uh, as I mentioned before, they're interchangeable. Um, I actually prefer to make my shape first, but it's not always the best method. But in this one, we should be okay. So I'm going to grab my poly tool, actually, and then I'm going to come into my screen, and I might just zoom in a little bit. Um, and with my view here, I may not be able to get the whole thing. Oh, it just fit. And I can also resize my space here while I'm drawing. And so I'm going to just draw around this. Now I could get fancy and draw along the curve. Um, due to time, I'm not going to. And you're going to see with the results that it's probably not necessary. So when it comes to like shapes and that kind of thing and this kind of work, if you're doing a lot of these, you're going to be able to be pretty rough to get the job done. Um, it's not as precise as like some rotoscoping and that kind of thing. All right, so then I'm going to go reveal my parameters. And in this case, let me zoom back out. All right. In this case, I'm going to switch my shape to a blur. And notice there's mosaic. So if we change our mind, but let's go blur. And then uh, I don't get fixed aspect ratio this time. So I have to kind of set the blur manually. So I'm just going to lower this a little bit. So it looks like a license plate, but you can't read it. And then again, feather which does have that fixed aspect ratio. Bring that up and then I'll just play with my bias. So I have this set up pretty fast, okay? So that's looking good. And then if uh, once we track the client's like, oh, let's make this mosaic, we'll be able to through this mode um, button menu on the left, the, the fast menu. Okay, let's track this. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into tracking and I'm gonna need two trackers for this. Um, and the reason being is because of that perspective change. So we want to, to track the scale and slight rotation and the position. So power tip for the strategy on this, always you're looking for a shape and contrast. And thankfully it's a black license plate on a red car. So built in uh, contrast and we've got a geometrical line there that's gonna work out well. So I'm gonna go on one side of this and then I'm also going to add a tracker. So I'm going to go to tracker setup and add a second tracker. And I'm going to move that over to the right side like that. And let's just uh, zoom in here a second. Um, it's not giving me my magnifying glass. OK, well, I'll just do this and then scroll around a little bit. All right, so we can see our two trackers. Notice I didn't go for like a tracker by the H and then the other H. That's a little too tight together. It won't mirror the perspective as well. Uh, so what you want to do is uh, be as far as part as possible on your subject. Okay, when you have a perspective change, you'll have better results. All right, and you can adjust your uh, search area and region of interest as you need. This is super clear footage, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to go ahead and start tracking. Okay. So it's following, you can see that it's sticking really, really well on the edges, okay? And again, a lot of times when you're obscuring objects or like this, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Otherwise you might wanna um, readjust. 
Uh, it might have been a little too sloppy there on the right, I'm noticing. So if I go point by point in a second, my right one seemed to drift a little bit. But from a blur standpoint, we might be okay. Yeah, so it did just start drifting to the right there a little bit. So I could turn off. Uh, I'm not going to actually do this, but just to give you the setup, if you were going to retract, like if one side's great and the other side's not, uh, you can turn off a point resets your tracking region and retrack. Okay. So anything that's good, you don't want to redo because ironically, that one may not be as great the second time. Okay. So you can turn these off on the left and on. I'm going to call this good uh, just because we're running uh, low on time already. Uh, let me just get full screen here. All right. So then I'm going to exit tracking. And there's my blur, and when I play, uh-oh, it's not following. Again, we got to combine the two. So this time, sub object selected, going to go into tracking, and for one shape, gets the two points. Okay, and then when I play it, it's looking good. Even that one that drifted, let's go into full screen mode. Shift Command F, Shift Control F. Oh, there you go. Even though that one drifted, it's okay because of the blur and the subject. So a lot of times I'll just say, well, is it okay? Because really it's just magic in the end. There's enough distraction, it's fine uh, to work. Otherwise I'd start tweaking it. Okay, last example here. This one, because it's more complex, because we got a tree, uh, we're going to want to set up the tracking first. I do prefer to set up my object first, but um, I've definitely found that on more complex tracking that you want to set up tracking first. So I'm going to go ahead and add my paint effect and pop right into tracking. So uh, the tracking tool and show you guys the setup for this. For this one, I'm going to put the tracking on her face because we're blurring a face. Um, let's come, uh, my zoom's back. And I'm just gonna move this like right here. Now, because I know that tree's coming up, I'm gonna go a little bit tighter because I don't want it to attach itself to the tree. When she goes behind it, of course it's going to, that's unavoidable. But I'm gonna try to track her for as long as possible. So by narrowing this, that's gonna help out with that. So if you have an obscured object and it's smooth motion, you can go with a smaller, tracking range okay so i've got that set up we got contrast and that let's see if this works and it starts off great and then it goes off okay i just hit my space bar oh i was too late if you hit your space bar mid track it'll stop the track um i was too slow so i got a full track here all right but if i go now to current and let's go to tracking data. We will see, let's see if I can shrink this display a little bit. So you guys can see a little better. There we go. All right, we'll see as I go through this, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, all the way even to there. Nice. Okay, and then it's off, but it doesn't matter, she's behind the tree. And then coming back out is where I want to set up another tracker. So it takes two trackers this time. Okay. So, and then I'm going to let Media Composer fill in the path between the two sets of tracking. All right. So I'm going to right click in my tracks and back in my tracking window on the brown track region, right click and add new tracker region because notice I don't have my box. And then I'm going to move this over. It's kind of remembering what we had. Um, I do need to zoom in on this one. So the more complex, the more likely you're going to have to be pretty specific. And this might be a little too narrow. Uh, we'll see go that range. But hopefully it'll just go ahead and track the rest of this because I took a moment to set it up well. And then I'm going to track it. So the key to doing multiple tracks is right clicking and adding that new tracker region. And then we'll track this. Okay. And there we go. Um, I'm still on current here. So I'm just gonna kind of scrub back. Looks good. 
right on her face. All right, what about the rest of it? Where now it kind of bounces back over here. Okay, uh, that may not be a big deal except for where she's kind of emerging from the tree. So here's my tip on that. I'm gonna go to the first spot where it gets off and mark it in. And so I get an in mark in my preview monitor, uh, but it shows up in my tracker. And then I'm gonna go to the spot where right before she, the last frame before the new tracker. Okay, and I'm gonna mark it out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do then is into out for my point range. So I'm back in the tracking window, clicked on the current monitor and into out for point range. And you're gonna select these and delete these. Okay, so I select them and then I can delete them. And what's going to happen is the uh, Media Composer should fill in the rest of this. So the gap between them. So if I go to all right now, it's not as easy to see, but it should fill that in. But notice that line's pretty straight following the path that she takes. Okay, then this part's reflecting that she's zooming in, that end of that path. So this should work out pretty well. And just go to current one more time. All right, and you can see it's following the tree. So it should all work out. All right, real fast, set up that blur object. I know we're short on time already. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm on the first frame, oval, just do a quick oval here. All right. Bring back my display because I'm on a small space, but can get that pretty fast. Let's feather this. Let's take our bias out. Let's make it a blur. Oh, let's do a mosaic. We haven't done one yet. Okay. And then uh, set up our trackers. So one. Now I didn't do two because she's her face is, is so far away in the screen. Doing a perspective change is going to be really, really tough. So I'm going to um, fix that with the keyframes. All right. So let's see how this went. There we go. It followed um, with all of our setup. So great. Now, um, let me switch to blur because this is a little, it'll be a little easier to see this final parts. Oh, select my object first, of course. Select your object, then change your style. All right, so we're all good here. Um, the one thing that does happen is it's taking up less space because she's getting closer. So I might just click this last keyframe, click my object and adjust the size of it. Okay, because it's so smooth. This one's easy to manually fix. Trying to set up two trackers on something so far away is gonna be really hard. But there we go, we obscured it across the object and, and she keeps going. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to questions because I know I went just a little bit over today. We went a little over, but I think everybody is enjoying this session, including cool. me, so it's been great. Um, so one question, one question to come in, so it was, do you suggest using setting the blur first on objects that are not moving and then adding trackers as those videos are coming in and starting with trackers on video that is moving and then setting the blur. Um, it, it really just comes down to the complexity of the effect. Like the first one, this one's so clear. It's, if it's just a simple position change, you can go either way. You can set up whatever your personal preference is. I always like to have my subjects, uh, objects set up first, uh, my paint objects. So I tend to do that first uh, and then track. Uh, as you get into something more complex, you might set up your trackers uh, first. But as you saw with this one, this one's more complex. It took two objects and I set up the blur effect first. When you get into something like this, when I get into corner pinning and I get into obscured objects or shape changes, say I haven't had any shape changes really, then I absolutely set up my tracking first. So it's um, my preference is always shape first, but the more complex the track, the more likely I'm gonna set up my tracker first as opposed to worrying about what the video is. If that makes sense. 
I think that makes perfect sense. It's a great review too of everything you covered. It was that worked out well. Um, cool. Someone did come out. I love Mary Ann's power tips. So I guess they want you to write a full book on just power tips. <laughs> okay. I have a lot of them. Yeah, Maybe we can make a series. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> All right. Maybe. Maybe we can do that one next. Um, so with that, I know we are running up on time. So let me go ahead and I will um, share next week's schedule. Um, so we will stop your screen and I will share my screen um, so that we can get that calendar here posted really quick. Um, so next week we do have another session with Mary Ann. Um, December 22nd, so that will be Tuesday and she's gonna be working with color correction. So we're so excited. Uh, to have that session as well. And then we'll be taking a week off for the holidays. Uh, Marianne will be traveling um, to get away from the snow, I think, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. So, but look for the calendar to be posted for January. And, yeah. <laughs> so look for the calendar to be posted for January and February. You can see that at avid.com, online learning webinars. And please drop us uh, a note for what you'd like Marianne to present. We'd love seeing them. So please let us know what you would like to see at live online learning at avid.com. And, and we'll uh, get some more sessions set up with Marianne. So <laughs> sounds good. Thanks, guys. I'm not seeing any other questions come in, Marianne. So we're good to go. So thank you again for the session. Thank you. Stay safe, day. everybody.